All right, so we are now looking in the second half of our Cold War units. We're now starting to look at the beginnings of the Vietnam conflict. So this is going to kind of take up the rest of our Cold War section. Um, so yeah, the beginnings of the Vietnam conflict. So we'll explain why and how the United States became more involved over time in Vietnam and describing the tactics used by both the Vietnamese, the Viet Cong, and the United States to win the Vietnam conflict. So those are kind of our big takeaways we want to get through for today. Also a reminder that we have readings on the Gulf of Tonkin and Ho Chi Minh Trail on Schoology that are going to be due next week. All right, make sure you've also taken that uh, first Cold War vocab quiz um, through Military Industrial Complex and the Space Technology stuff. So just some kind of background photos here on the country of Vietnam as a whole. Very much now today, nowadays a mixture of, you know, very agricultural based and also very modern-esque. All right, very beautiful landscapes here out along uh, the ocean and then kind of here up in the mountains and hills and valleys, you know, very gorgeous country. So, location of Vietnam. So we're still sort of in this area of the Cold War or kind of within Asia where we're still seeing a lot of tension. All right, so we've seen that with China, uh, Korea's up here. So Vietnam is on the southern border of China while North Korea is kind of on the northeastern border. All right. And so we kind of get the country here as a whole, bordering Laos, Cambodia, China up here. But also the strategics of, you know, the country itself is, you know, mixture of rivers, uh, low-lying valleys, and these green spots next to the ocean, especially down here, sustainable to flooding, hence why we have a lot of, you know, rice paddies and stuff like that for uh, agriculture. But also a lot of highlands, valleys, and mountains that kind of uh, go up and down throughout the entirety of the country, on its east, or sorry, on its western half, alongside of its borders with Cambodia and Laos. Those are going to be very important later. All right, so just some kind of history here. Um, so as we know, Japan, this is the areas that they had conquered throughout World War II. So at one point, Vietnam was under French control. Before that and after that, um, it was a colony of France from about the 1850s and 60s, and then France came back in into uh, Vietnam following the first, Second World War. All right. So in the sense when we talk about dividing Vietnam, like why is there a conflict to begin with? All right. So for those that had me during uh, trimester two, and we talked about the League of Nations after World War One, where, you know, talk about the issue of self-determination and that only the Europeans get it. One of the guys who ends up going to the conference is going to be the leader of what we call communist North Vietnam. That is Ho Chi Minh. All right. He goes and, you know, he's arguing and he believes very much in what President Wilson has to say about, you know, self-determination, every country, every people should have the ability to govern themselves. Min believes that, and he wants that for his people in Vietnam, but of course, the United States and much of the European powers are kind of ignoring anybody outside of Europe. Self-determination for Europe was the goal inside of the treaties following World War I. All right, so Ho Chi Minh plays a large factor in actually fighting the French and also the Japanese during World War II, and after the conflict, the fighting with France continues, and this is actually the Vietnam conflict begins kind of, or reignites during 1945 as Japan is giving up on the war and France re-enters. So the Vietnamese are now fighting against essentially France trying to reclaim its colonies. And France has these issues all over the place. It's not just Vietnam, um, but it's a losing battle. All right. So the United States kind of, again, under this theory of what we said with containment, the Truman Doctrine, you know, we have to fight communism where it is so that it doesn't expand. There's the domino theory that comes up that the U.S. believes that if Vietnam falls to communism, so will the rest of Southeast Asia, all right? We've stopped it in China. We've stopped it in North Korea with the Korean War. Um, it hasn't really expanded too much, kind of like the only big loss here is Cuba, and that comes kind of during this division of Vietnam. So because Southeast Asia provides a lot of iron, rubber, uh, oil, um, and manufacturing to the rest of the world, we cannot let that fall to the communist forces, because that means that we're going to be at a disadvantage and that they're going to gain something here. So essentially, it's like playing a game of dominoes. Right? You set them all up, you knock one over, and then everything else is going to fall. So there's kind of your analogy here. So the United States initially supports the French, who are in a losing battle, all right? and then South Vietnam, which is going to end up taking on the United States' backing here. So kind of ending the first conflicts here with the French, ends at Dien Bien Phu, which is in northern Vietnam, uh, where the French are essentially ambushed and massacred by Vietnamese guerrilla forces. Um, and so the French are saying, we have to bow out of this. We've lost so many men, materials. We can't really support ourselves after the Second World War, and this is not going well. The tactics that the uh, Vietnamese are using is what they call guerrilla warfare. It's traditional 
you know, hide and go seek kind of fighting, not the stuff that the French army is very good at here. Um, so France decides that they're going to back out. The U.S. still is going to supply the anti-communist forces in the country because Ho Chi Minh is allying himself with communist sides, so he's getting aid from China and Russia. Um, but the country itself, can not, the United States doesn't want the country to be um, become communist. So uh, what they decide with the, with the United Nations is that they divide the country between the northern half and North Vietnam and the southern half, which is supposed to be anti-communist. All right, and that is determined with the Geneva Accords following Dien Bien Phu that there's going to be elections in 1956 to reunite Vietnam as one country. Whichever side wins the majority of the votes all right, will dictate the change in the country. If that's going to be the North, then it's going to be communist. So if it's the South, then it's not going to be a communist, more of a, along the line of a democratic. But the U.S. cancels this, and this is during the Eisenhower administration, in fear of communist victory. All right, and we've been aiding the French essentially going back to the end of World War II with Harry S. Truman. So we're in Vietnam long before we actually put troops on the ground in the 1960s. Right? So North Vietnam and their communist allies in the south, known as the Viet Cong Militia, because it's not just the North Vietnamese army that we're going to be fighting here, but also this group here, the Viet Cong, who are essentially South Vietnamese who want to side with the North for reunification, um, continue to fight. And the U.S. supports what is essentially a very weak, government within South Vietnam. It's very much um, corrupt, very much against the will of the people. It's not very democratic, and it actually has a lot of enemies inside the South because of the fact that it doesn't look after the interests of its people. All right, so just some kind of images here. Uh, you know, this, here's the Vietnamese actually beating the French, the French evacuating here. Location of Dien Bien Phu here in the north um, was where they were ambushed. So the, lead, the initial leaders after the uh, Accords. Here's the demilitarized zone here, the third, no, sorry, the 17th parallel, not the 38th, where we saw with Korea. Northern Vietnam, having the major city, the initial capital of Hanoi, and then Saigon here in the south. Here's Ho Chi Minh. Okay, it, it says Korea. I apologize for that. It's supposed to say Vietnam. Okay, and then Go Dinh Diem, a very much corrupt politician and military advisor, uh, who is in the initial leader of South Vietnam. Problems with Dinh Diem. Okay. Uh, protests, essentially attacking his own citizens, and then monks protesting his uh, essentially um, restriction of religion and freedom of speech uh, would light themselves on fire in protest. And this was actually on the cover of uh, Life or Time magazine early in the 1960s. So Din Diem actually ends up getting uh, assassinated by his own military leaders, and the more likable person takes over in the early 1960s. But this is not the kind of thing that we want to say, we're supporting this government, these people that are killing their own and, you know, taking away the rights of their own people. So, two things that you want to do, all right? Make sure that you look at that Schoology assignment on the uh, Gulf of Tonkin incident, because that's going to explain, I'm not going to explain it here. You're going to have to read up on that on your own. Go in depth with that article, because it's going to explain how the U.S. gets more involved instead of just aiding with true, aiding with you know military advisors, aiding with supplies and money to South Vietnam, and why we end up getting troops on the ground in Vietnam. All right, and then it's going to explain the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which is going to explain kind of um, essentially much of what we are hoping to accomplish here within the style of fighting. It's going to explain what's why the Ho Chi Minh Trail is important for the North, for the Viet Cong, for the United States. All right. Because we have to consider what are the reasons why we don't invade North Vietnam. We never invade. We attack a lot. We um, have ships off the coast. We send in a lot of bombs. We bomb the place a lot. But troops on the ground essentially remain actually kind of in the border countries of Vietnam and in South Vietnam. All right. So this is kind of the stuff that we have to deal with and look at going to. Because we have to consider who do we attack. There's the North Vietnamese Army. There's the Viet Cong. So which groups are we going to focus on? And then there's the fear of China. Right? Do we go if we go into North Vietnam? Are we gonna have to deal with another Korean incident where the Chinese government gets involved in something the Chinese army? That's not something we want to repeat. Um, that's something to keep in mind. So the Vietnam War essentially becomes a very big conflict between not only the North Vietnamese Army but also that Viet Cong and the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So again, you're gonna to want to look into those readings, right? Because those are gonna be essential. Um, this is gonna be stuff that's gonna make a lot more sense within the Ho Chi Minh reading. All right, so make sure you take a look at that. Uh, you definitely find videos of it as well, because um, this goes with that Ho Chi Minh Trail part. All right, as is this. Again, it's very blurry, but you can Google Ho Chi Minh Trail stuff. So in terms of the look, consider this, and if we had more time in class, we would do it. On the left is the North Vietnamese Army. 
and then the Viet Cong over here. So compare kind of the style of dress, the way, um, uh, you know, they conduct themselves. Again, those go in with these regions, right? So comparing the look, the style of fighting, all that jazz. So the strategies for the war um, for the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong, um, they can strike anywhere at any time. The U.S. will always reveal its positions with airstrikes first on the area. Then they'll have helicopter deployment. So essentially we are using helicopters to deploy our troops. And essentially the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese can hide and decide if they want to attack or not. All right, if they decide that, hey, we want to ambush these Americans, they're going to do it. If not, they can literally just hide in the jungles and, you know, skip it. They can avoid American soldiers if they please most of the time. All right, because we always reveal where we're going to go with airstrikes and then helicopters. It's not a quiet approach that the United States takes. Okay. There are a few U.S. strategies. Um, so consider, again, Ho Chi Minh Trail. All right, that's going to be part of that reading. Um, bombing North Vietnam, sorry, North Vietnam, and then the use of what we call Agent Orange. So you're going to look in the textbook for that. And essentially, the U.S. strategy is not necessarily going after conquering land. It's not about invading North Vietnam. It is what we call search and destroy. All right. U.S. wants a body count. So we land in one spot, search and attack, and then leave. So the goal is to try to kill as many people in, as possible. And you have to think about why that does not work, right? You have to remember that when we put troops on the ground in 1964, some Vietnamese soldiers have been fighting against the Japanese for 20 plus years for their independence and for the unification. So you got to understand search and destroy is not necessarily the most moral victory there, right? And so what this kind of does here, Agent Orange, put this in contact within the Ho Chi Minh Trail and the Viet Cong, um, Gulf of Tonkin, again, you want to read up on that. Because here's where we see um, U.S. troop deployment. So here's Vietnam. This comes after, okay, the Gulf of Tonkin in 1964. So again, you want to look that up because this is, ex explains why the United States gets involved and why it's controversial. All right, where are the battles? Consider that with along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Um, and then a really great video here. So this guy, um, I remember his name, but he has this whole video series of like film, of like essentially he watches historical films and occasionally TV shows and sums up, you know, what's accurate, what's great about it, what's not so great. Um, usually the videos are like 20 minutes long. He does a great one here on We Were Soldiers, which is a, it's a, not a bad film. Um, so it stars Mel Gibson. It's based on a number of, uh, or two books um, from soldiers' accounts of both the United States and the Vietnam soldiers or North Vietnamese soldiers that fight in 1964 in the Iadrang Valley. It's the first real battle between the U.S. and North Vietnamese forces. Um, and so the video itself is pretty cool to watch, but if you just watch around from the 18 minute mark to the two and a half minute mark, you kind of go away from, you know, how good is the movie? What is the movie really about? Um, how accurate is it? Da, 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 da. Um, but it sums up the war pretty darn well in terms of kind of what the United States and the North Vietnamese are fighting for and why this is very controversial. Cause again, we don't actually declare war. All right, the Gulf of Tonkin resolution gives us kind of the whole premise for using our soldiers the way that we do. All right, so that is something to look at. Um, do those readings, they'll definitely fill in the gaps here um, for why we end up getting into the Vietnam conflict and how that looks for us. Um, so essentially looking at these strategies, filling in the gaps for this information. So definitely take a look at that um, and we'll kind of check out how the war actually goes here now that we know the strategies now that we know kind of more of the background information uh going forward so there you go